Hi, I'm Klaus Freemore from uh, Loop Tackle Design. Uh, today we're going to introduce you to the underhand style, show you the basics of it and the, and the line and the leader setups. Originally the underhand cast was described back in the late 80s, early 90s by Jörn Andersson, the previous rod designer from Loop. He uh, described it very carefully in his book and it was developed for very tight spots. You fish under trees, you know, in the Swedish and the Norwegian rivers with the, with the trees and the cliffs behind you. So a cut down line weight to whatever situation you would end up in. So depending on how much room you had behind you, you would have a different head length. So that was the whole philosophy behind it, but there's a little bit more to it. So it's a very short casting stroke, you could say, but it's also, it's a combination of the casting stroke versus the line length that you're fishing. So you won't be able to load the rod with a short casting stroke if you have a long line on. It is easier to load the rod with a shorter line. So that affects our rod design today. So we try to design the rods with as short casting stroke as possible. That doesn't mean you can't cast with a longer casting stroke and a long line. You can go that way in terms of line length and casting stroke, but you can't have a rod that's designed for long lines and long casting strokes and then go backwards to a short casting stroke. That doesn't work. So, so you could say that the rods today are designed for the DNA of loop, so the short, short casting stroke with the shooting heads, but, but they work perfectly well with longer lines and longer casting strokes. So the underhand style is a slightly different style than the more traditional space style, but so it's basically shorter movements. So you, you, you move the rods like a pivot. So it requires less energy from the caster and it, you can cast because you move the rod less, you can cast in tighter spots, you cast with slightly shorter heads than you would with more traditional style. So it's less effort put into it, but with as much outcome as, as more traditional style. So that's the, whole, that's the whole idea of the underhand cast. So for the underhand style here, we're just gonna run through the, the line and the leader here. So it's a coated running line. We're on an eight weight rod, so it's a 0 0.032 inch running line. <clears throat> the shooting head here is 10.6 meters long for the eight weight. And then we have the leader, which is uh, sort of the most important part in this setup. It's quite long. It's a loop 17 foot tapered leader tied to the tip, of course. And then we added a little tip to it. So it's about, what's that? Two, three feet. So the leader here is close to 20 feet long. That's our anchor point when we're setting up the, the cast. So. We have the 10 and a half meter shooting head, but we have a nearly a 20 foot leader on, which is our anchor. So we'll just make a straight downstream underhand cast here. We'll just call it a straight underhand cast without an angle change. So grip, it's just a ring form grip, just loose, no thumb up there. It's not an ax, just nice and light. So the rod can rotate in here because it's a pivot. So it has to move in this hand position here. So if you too tight a grip, it won't be able to move. The bottom hand, just place it on your middle finger, fold the index and the thumb around the cork there. So our feet is pointing in our new casting, uh, in our casting direction. There is no new casting direction. We're lifting from downstream. We're gonna cast downstream. So this is the most important part of any casting style, doesn't matter what it is, but that's the first initial lift. Here you just push your elbow backwards till it's 90 degrees. The rod is 45 degrees between you and the water. Then this top hand doesn't do anything anymore. So it's just from down here, push your elbow backwards, 90 degrees, rod is 45. That should lift your shooting head off the water. So there's no line attached to the water, only the leader. So lift, now the left hand just describes a half circle in front of you, there. So your left hand, your right hand, your shoulder is in a straight line. And then you just push or pull it straight back to your hip again, there. So if we speed it up a little bit, 
lift, sweep backwards, anchor, cast. A little bit faster. Lift, sweep, anchor, cast. So everything is done with the lower hand. The top hand, the only thing it does is lift the line off the water. Left hand takes over, cast. Of course, when we're in a river, we want to change the angle. Fly swings over to our own bank. We're going to cast towards the other side. So <clears throat> I prefer just to stand dead straight on my feet, whether you put one or the other foot around or in front, doesn't matter. But just not too much. You have a tendency of twisting or pushing with your shoulder if you have too wide a stand. So I prefer just to stand dead straight on my feet, toes pointing in my new casting direction. So I'm just going to go through it slow-mo here. So we twist our upper body down towards the line, rod points straight at the line. So we do exactly the same as we did before we push our elbow backwards. Rod is 45. Left hand hasn't left the body yet. We rotate in our hip. When the rod passes your nose tip between you and the target, here comes the left hand anchor cast. So the angle change, you twist your upper body towards the line, rod points straight at the line. You lift by pushing your elbow backwards to 90 degrees, rod is 45. You rotate your hip, line or rod passes your nose tip, out comes your left hand, leader anchors, cast forward. Lift the line off the water, rotate your hip, out comes your left hand, leader anchors, and you cast. I'll just run you through a little uh, thing here um, if you want to increase your distance. So first we were talking about just lift to 90 degrees, out comes your lower hand, straight back in again. But if you want to increase your distance, you need to extend that acceleration of the bottom hand and you do that by lifting your elbow so the rod tip goes slightly backwards. So let me show you here. So you lift. You sweep the bottom hand out, there comes the elbow. So you get a much longer acceleration of your bottom hand. And here you have to watch out for it doesn't become a, a lift upwards. It has to be backwards. So backwards, cast forward. Yeah, so we went through the, the underhand cast here, <clears throat> which is sort of the basic rod movement. And whatever you do before doesn't matter, as long as you end there. Left hand, right hand, shoulder in a straight line, lift the elbow a little bit, pull the butt section back to your hip. Then it doesn't matter what you do before. So you all know, heard about the snake roll, the reverse snake roll and all kinds of other casts. It doesn't matter, we make a snake roll, we end there. Just wait for the line to land, cast. Okay, so we'll speed it up a little bit. So, snake roll, there, end, cast. So now the, the snake roll is not really a cast, it's just another way of picking up your line. We can do two circles, there, one, two, there. We end there again, cast forward. We can just wiggle the rod tip a little bit, back comes the leader, cast. As long as we end there. It doesn't matter what we've done before, cast forward. So whenever you, <clears throat> you go out fishing and you can do this, you can, it doesn't matter how you set up the line beforehand, whether it's a snake roll, reverse snake roll, two circles, whatever, it doesn't matter. You're gonna end in this position there. So your left hand, your right hand, your shoulder. And then the only thing you need to do is push that butt hand <clears throat> back to your hip again and the line will go out. So it's good. It's like a foundation for everything you can do. And it's, it's pretty simple. So it's, this is the foundation for everything. If you can do this, you can do anything. Doesn't matter. Lift, sweep, anchor, cast. <laughs> 